going over upward facing dog today. A pose that is very, very near and dear to my heart because I have learned to really, really love it and just enjoy all of that open space that it brings both into my physical heart and into my emotional heart. And when I started off practicing, I kind of started in the Ashtanga world where if you haven't practiced Ashtanga, in the beginning of the practice, there are many, many sun salutations and throughout the practice, you do many vinyasas, which is many upward facing chaturanga and downward facing dogs. Um, and when you kind of do something over and over and over again, it has a benefit of kind of putting you in this moving meditation where you kind of get into this trance and you kind of get lost in the movement and it's very therapeutic and it's really, really beautiful. But on the other hand, sometimes it may cause you to move mindlessly and you kind of lose notice of the movements that you, move, that you make with your body. And I would find that I would leave class sometimes and although I was completely refreshed and completely rejuvenated and super elevated, I would still leave with this little pinch in my lower back. A thing that now as a teacher I find some of my students suffering from and the last thing I want is for somebody to leave my class with any pain anywhere both in their body and both in their soul. So I just want to go over this quick little pose. There's just a few little things that you can do that I do uh, that, has help, that have helped me really find that open beautiful feeling that I was missing when going into, chatter, into upward facing dog. So most of the times we'll be going into upward facing through chaturanga or through vinyasa. And that's totally fine. We've covered chaturanga in a past video. Now I want you to kind of take notice. If you are doing chaturanga with your knees on the ground because you just need that extra support, I recommend going all the way down to lay on the belly and then go up into cobra and then maybe go up into upward facing. If you're doing just a regular classic chaturanga, you're going on to the backs of your feet, untucking your toes and then keeping the thighs and everything lifted as you send the chest forward. So I'll start off with doing a basic kind of explanation of exactly what is upward facing dog. How does it look? What is it supposed to feel like? And I won't do it through chaturanga. We're just going to go directly into it. So as I said, we're keeping the toes untucked. So we're on the backs of the feet. And I want you to imagine with upward facing dog that you're pretty much in a plank, but you're sending your heart forward. So this is an upward facing dog. When I've completely collapsed into my lower back, I've completely collapsed into my shoulders. I'm not engaging my legs. I'm not engaging my core. This doesn't feel good in my back. It doesn't feel good in my shoulders. And even my knees are kind of not enjoying this right now. So if you feel like this is just a little too much for you to hold, let's start off with a cobra, okay? Now, there are many variations of cobra, one of them being, or my kind of favorite to teach for people that are really trying to build that strength in their back, is to bring the hands to that kind of, to the line of your last rib here. Now, we're hugging the elbows in, pulling the elbows back, so you're really sliding the shoulder blades down here. And the feet, depending on the on the amount of pain that you feel in your lower back, you can keep them wider to kind of loosen that up. Or if you don't feel any pain at all, you can bring your big toes to touch. Once again, you can kind of adjust with how your body feels here. And we're really engaging the legs, right? So we really want to think as if someone is almost pulling our toes back to lift the kneecaps up, engage the glutes, really, really engage the glutes here as you start to really pull the belly button away. And then we're thinking of sending the elbows back. We're keeping everything hugged in. We're peeling the chest off the floor and we've come into a low cobra. From here, maybe we can continue to keep everything engaged as we pull everything up a little bit higher and then 
slowly coming down. Once we've come into our chaturanga, or upward facing dog, in a comfortable manner, and we kind of feel that our cobra has started to really grow and really start to strengthen itself, maybe we can visit upward facing. And as I said, upward facing is on the backs of the feet, right? But I want you to notice this, once again, is not upward facing. This is just king cobra. This is a high cobra pose. So for upward facing, we're keeping our legs off of the ground. We're sending the shoulder blades down the same way that we did in cobra. You're really pushing the, the shoulder blades together and away from the ears or away from the neck and you're sending your chest and rib cage forward. So you're really creating this almost gate with your shoulders that you're trying to rip through with your chest and really send the gaze slightly up so you're not throwing your head back because then you can't breathe. Pulling the belly in, the legs are engaged the same way that we're engaged in, in uh, Cobra. And all you're focusing about is really almost pushing the hands back as if you're trying to pull the hands back towards the back of the mat and you're sending the weight forward with the chest. So again, just a quick recap of all of our things. If we still want to work on focusing the back strength, we're starting off with Cobra. By keeping the toes untucked, you can keep them at hips distance or wider or keeping the toes touched lifting the kneecaps off of the ground, engaging the glutes, engaging the quads, lifting the belly button off the ground, pulling the hands back to that last little rib, pulling the, the elbows in, knitting everything in nice and tight. As we pull the elbows back, we peel the chest off the ground. Breathing here, really pulling the shoulder blades down for Cobra. If we feel like we have the strength, we start to completely peel the body off the mat, peeling the legs as well, keeping them nice, as act, nice and active as we really push the chest between the gate of the shoulders and we're really engaging the entire body. That was it for Upward Facing Dog. I really hope that that was helpful for you. And if you have any extra questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or on here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next, in the next video.